Hey, what's going on everybody? Happy Sunday evening out there. Hope we're all having a wonderful end to our week and hopefully we're all getting ready for the week ahead and uh, it's going to be a real doozy this week. I'll just let you know ahead of time. We've got a lot of big stories on tap including the real elephant in the room and that is Tropical Storm Adalia likely soon to become Hurricane and potentially Major Hurricane Adalia and will unfortunately uh, all but certainly strike Florida here uh, going into the middle of this next week. So again, now is the time for uh, to prepare and uh, very likely evacuation orders will be issued over the next couple of days as well. So really make sure you stay in tune to the forecast here and to your local officials uh, for all of you folks down there in Florida. So again, that is the big story going on out there. Now, um, as for some other stories, we do have some other things we're going to talk about in today's video, including some very stormy weather in the southeast that we're seeing right now and also just some overall nicer weather for some folks out there. So uh, we'll definitely uh, briefly mention those as, of course, you know, not everyone is going to be directly affected by Adalia here, but of course we will spend most of the time in this video on that topic. Now, uh, if you are new here, welcome aboard. We did gain a lot of subscribers over the past couple of days, uh, as the last video did very well, and I'm very grateful for all of you for um, you know uh, hitting the like button on that video, commenting, let me know uh, where you're watching from, and of course subscribing really helps the channel out a lot and means the world to me. So again, really thank you for that. Uh, now, obviously, let's go ahead and do it again on this video, uh, as of course that does help the channel, but also helps get the word out to folks because because obviously this is going to be a life-threatening situation and we really do want to go out there and warn as many people as we possibly can uh, before it is too late as we uh, just see all too often here with many hurricanes, including Hurricane Ian that we saw last year. Unfortunately, a lot of people kind of snuck up on him, uh, didn't pay all that much attention. Then next thing you know, uh, unfortunately, all those folks in Fort Myers really got hit quite tough. So we'll hope this one's a little bit better uh, and uh, we'll definitely... Uh, you know, pray for all those folks out there. Now, with all that said, let's go ahead and jump into it because I don't want to waste too much of your time here. So, taking a look at current satellite imagery, a lot going on out there. I'll go ahead and circle uh, all the areas that we're going to have to watch out for. Uh, so, starting out here in uh, kind of the Atlantic further out. Uh, this is Hurricane Franklin right now continuing to spin away and he's become quite strong actually. Now uh, he is also doing what we have expected. He's kind of splitting the gap between uh, the Bahamas and Bermuda here and will eventually curve out to sea throughout the next week. So luckily no direct impacts from him and luckily he's also kind of a pretty compact storm. So um, you know he's not too large and it's going to be very difficult for any kind of impacts to hit many people uh, from Franklin out there. Now very different story with Adalia here. Again the center of this thing is just off off the Yucatan uh, but you know the impacts of this or just kind of the field of it is very large so as this approaches Florida a lot of people are going to be impacted well before the center of the storm even gets very close and once it begins to move inland again a lot of people going to be impacted by that shield of rain and wind just due to the sheer size uh, that this storm system is taking on now as for the current kind of conditions out here in the southeast this stalled front we've been talking about continuing to cause some havoc including very heavy rainfall and some gusty winds that we've seen uh, in a lot of major population areas of the southeast including Columbia South Carolina and Charlotte North Carolina Carolina getting in on some of those feistier storms this evening. So again, it was a very hot afternoon today and finding where this front is on the map is pretty easy to do. It's kind of just uh, to the north of these advisories and again, where that rain is setting up on both sides of it, also pretty indicative of where that front has stalled out. Now, as for those current advisories, Again, we've seen very hot temperatures, so we have had some heat advisories from uh, kind of my home area down here into the western upstate of South Carolina all the way down uh, through Texas. So a lot of places, again, very hot, very steamy. Now, outside of there, that rain is helping to cool things off a little bit. So uh, this evening into sections of the Carolinas is where we're really seeing that rainfall. So from the Charlotte metro where we're seeing some flooding currently all the way out into eastern North Carolina into Fayetteville. Uh, Wilmington and down the I-95 corridor towards Florence and across the I-20 corridor back towards Columbia and Augustus getting in on that rain as well. So again, very active radar imagery this evening. All right, so starting out this um, kind of forecasting part of the video, I'm going to run you through the next couple of days here in the eastern half of the country and just show you what to expect. So again, through the evening hours tonight and even likely well into the overnight hours, expect this rain to continue and uh, kind of be very slow moving in nature across Virginia, the Carolinas, Tennessee, Georgia, and just kind of the circled area in general. Still expecting that rain to continue overnight tonight. Now, should begin to fizzle out a little bit going into the early morning hours before tomorrow afternoon we get another flare-up of these storms. Uh, tomorrow could be a bit nicer in the Carolinas compared to today. We could see a bit more of that rain further up towards Virginia. 
Virginia and then also back down towards uh, areas of Alabama and Georgia seeing a bit more rain tomorrow as well again all of this is just due to that stalled front out over the region now, as we get into Tuesday, uh, that's when the forecast becomes a bit more complicated here as, again, what is likely a dahlia here um, or hurricane a dahlia, maybe major hurricane a dahlia gets close to Florida. Now, a quick disclaimer here uh, for all of you weather geeks out there that see, um, you know, 989 millibars on this. Just ignore that. I'm using the NAM model right now, which uh, is not built for hurricanes. It's really built for uh, just thunderstorm activity and things of that sort over land. So just ignore the millibar numbers on Adalia here. But it does do a good general idea of just showing the timing and the general location of it. So. Again, those impacts really could begin as early as Tuesday with some of those uh, outer bands moving on inland into Florida. And again, that front will still be stalled out over the southeast. So anywhere along that front could still see some stronger storms popping up on our Tuesday afternoon before going into Wednesday. We get more of a widespread rain event to unfold. All right, so taking a look at the dew points here, again, a pretty nice way to take a look at where this front is stalling out. And uh, going into tomorrow afternoon, again, a pretty nice day for you folks up near the Ohio River Valley and into the Midwest, uh, as well as up into Northern Great Plains. Dew points struggling to really hit 60 tomorrow, so it's going to be very comfortable for you folks. Now down into the southeast where that front is stalled out, very different story. Dew points getting well up into the 70s, uh, helping to fuel that very muggy air as well as those afternoon thunderstorms. And that same thing will hold on going into our Tuesday afternoon, evening, and into Wednesday as Adalia uh, comes ashore and just floods the atmosphere with that uh, Atlantic and Gulf moisture, really helping those dew points come upwards. And it's going to feel very tropical out there on uh, the second half of Tuesday and into Wednesday, all in part to a combination of that stalled front and Adalia moving on in. So Kind of zooming this picture out and looking ahead through the next week. Again, uh, Adalia expected to make landfall, and we'll talk more about that in depth as we go ahead, just showing you the overall picture here. Uh, making landfall likely very early morning hours of Wednesday. Uh, so Wednesday afternoon into Thursday is whenever I expect the worst of the rainfall into uh, the southeastern part of the country. And really Wednesday, Thursday could begin to improve a bit, but... Um, Wednesday afternoon is going to be very wet for the southeast. So uh, where I have this red line, that is that front that's going to be stalled out. And what we're going to get is this kind of uh, motion around Adalia. And as that kind of rides up the Carolina slope, that's going to cause a lifting in itself. And then that combined with this stalled front is going to cause even more lifting. And I'm very concerned about flooding potential uh, kind of in a stretch uh, in this circled area into the Carolinas. I think flooding is going to be a very big problem this week for you folks where, again, we're already seeing a lot of rain right now, saturated up that soil and by the time a dahlia moves on through uh, we're not going to have much room left for error now uh, quickly looking behind a dahlia it does look like a bit of uh, some nicer canadian air tries to funnel on in behind that so i think after a dahlia moves in going into that start of september that first couple of days just in time for college football to start um could be a bit nicer out there. Dew points will likely come down a bit. Temperatures will likely come down a bit, and it could just, in general, feel nicer. Now, don't get too used to it, because I think in the long run, unfortunately, that ridge builds back in, and we warm back up. But um, again, you can see that pretty well here on the dew point map. Again, very muggy the next couple of days as we continue with that front and Adalia. Behind it, though, a shot of drier air. So uh, this is going into our Thursday afternoon. Uh, this could be a little bit later. This could be more like Friday, depending on the exact timing of Adalia. But either way, behind it, very nice drier air coming in from Canada that will help to cool things down and dry things out a good bit before going in the long run. Once again, that humidity looks to work its way back into the picture. So definitely watching out for that. All right, so let's go ahead and discuss the tropics as a whole here and uh, just in general what we're seeing. I'm not going to talk about this area right now because quite frankly, it's just not that big of a deal. So we will kind of ignore that for right now. The big stories are Franklin and Adalia. So Franklin, again, he's going to continue to kind of shoot the gap here between Bermuda and the United States, likely not causing uh, too many major impacts outside of some rough seas, but no direct impacts to land. And then, of course, Adalia, the big story here, likely to cause hurricane impacts into Florida and tropical storm impacts well inland. So let's go ahead and talk about Franklin really quickly, just because uh, we don't have to spend too much time on him. So uh, looking at the cone of uncertainty here, Bermuda just barely in that cone. So again, Pretty much all landmass is out of the picture here uh, for Franklin here, but is expected to become a major hurricane going into tomorrow and will likely stay that status going throughout Tuesday as well. So uh, definitely could have some really nice satellite imagery on uh, Franklin here as he continues to just churn away and be a real fish storm, if you will. 
All right, so let's go ahead and shift focus to Adalia now. So uh, as you'll notice here, we got a bit of that shrimp look, if you will. You hear this often in the tropics with kind of the head of Adalia here or the low pressure uh, and then that kind of shrimp tail wrapping around it. And again, just you can tell overall uh, the flow here is pretty uh, hurricane looking, if you will. So again, obviously the center of this uh, is just off the Yucatan Peninsula. And right now looking at satellite imagery from what I can see, this shows the signs of a strengthening and maturing tropical system. Now you may be wondering, well, how can we tell that? Uh, well, the big key is see this big area of thunderstorms and I'm going to change my mouse color here so you can see this a little bit better, hopefully with the blue, uh, this big area of thunderstorms firing over the center of Adalia here with a lot of lightning strikes. Now, a lot of studies have been done that suggest um, these very big hits of lightning strikes uh, indicate um, you know, very rapid strengthening. We'll see if that's the case or not, but either way, what I can tell you, very strong storms beginning to grow over the core of the storm, and our hurricane hunters that are out there right now are going to sample that core, tell us exactly how strong the storm is and what we are expecting uh, with that data. Another thing those hurricane hunters are doing is they're flying in a real kind of zigzag pattern. I'm going to have to change my color again here so you can see it, uh, but a real zigzag pattern here over the Gulf. Uh, and the purpose of that is not to just spend random gas money and commit CO2 emissions, um, but uh, to help really analyze the atmosphere here ahead of Adalia. And we can use that for our computer models, uh, throw all that in there, use those real fancy math equations that I personally will never understand uh, and get a better forecast of where this thing is going. So with all that information, this is what we have from the experts uh, in Miami from the National Hurricane Center. Again, expecting hurricane landfalling into the Big Bend region of Florida going into the very early morning hours of Wednesday. That is the expectation currently. And again, this could uptrend in intensity, definitely. A lot of time over very unstable atmosphere and uh, waters out here, so definitely need to watch that. But right now calling for a 100 mile per hour hurricane, which is a category two, into the Big Bend of Florida into the early morning hours of Wednesday. So that's what you really need to know right now. Now, in terms of watches, we already have hurricane watches up from kind of the Apalachicola here uh, area all the way down towards Fort Myers, uh, who is all too familiar with uh, these kind of situations. And uh, even tropical storm watches all the way down into sections of the Keys and further down uh, kind of into the Naples area of Florida. So again, a lot of people at risk here and um, Florida will not be the only story as this moves inland into Georgia and the Carolinas flooding potential for maybe a couple tornadoes depending on track and a, even some very gusty winds up to tropical storm strength very likely for us folks as well. So again, a lot of people under the gun here. Now looking at the forecast for tropical storm force winds, uh, already an 80% chance of seeing that here well into the Gulf of Mexico. And again, very likely that we're going to see that uh, or the chance of those winds well into the Big Bend region of Florida and potentially even into the low country of South Carolina, into the sand hills of North Carolina and into the Savannah area of Georgia. So again, areas well inland very easily could be impacted by those winds as well. So definitely have to watch that. All right, so taking a look at storm surge here, uh, this might be a little blurry to see, so I'll try my best to explain it. Unfortunately, this was the best resolution I could find for this map, but again, we're expecting up to 11 feet of storm surge uh, here from really just much of the Big Bend of Florida. I would try to pronounce these uh, town names, uh, but unfortunately, I would really just embarrass myself, so I'm going to um, not do that, and I'm sure my mom is going to be very disappointed in me being from Florida her entire life, so sorry, mom, uh, but, you know, going to, um, you know, just not bring that embarrassment right now to myself. Anyway, the big story, again, Big Bend region looks like the main impacts right now. Now, this very well could shift. This could shift further down towards Tampa. This could shift further up towards uh, kind of the Tallahassee and the Pensacola Destin area of Florida. That is also possible. But right now, our models are really honing in on the Big Bend. So that is where we're expecting the worst storm surge up to 11 feet. So that's very life threatening at that point. And even uh, up to five feet possible all the way down into the Tampa Bay area. So a lot of places under the gun for some storm surge right now. And of course, in terms of evacuation orders, uh, look at your local officials as they will have the best information for that. Alrighty, so let's take a look at some of our models here and what they're showing. We'll start with the H Wharf here. This is kind of old reliable here in the hurricane department. Uh, shows a very, you know, strengthening storm here going up into the Gulf. This is into about 8 and 11 p.m. on Tuesday night. So this is the Big Bend of Florida. It might be a little hard to see on your map, but I'll try to outline Florida here. Uh, this is the Big Bend though right here. So uh, H Wharf model again, begins to strengthen this storm up to likely a borderline major hurricane status with these kind of pressures and brings that landfall into Florida going into the very early kind of daylight hours of Wednesday. So 
in this scenario we would see very bad storm surge here on the eastern side of the storm the potential for tornadoes as well and just a very strong wind here of course in this eye wall now one thing that I should add about Adalia here is uh, the size of it. Now, we talked about that earlier. It's much larger than um, Franklin, for example, that we're seeing out in the Atlantic. And that is going to cause, you know, some good and bad news. The good news for that is generally the more spread out the wind field is for the um, kind of hurricanes, um, the less that the intensity of those winds are. So generally, compared to hurricanes like Hurricane Andrew that were very small and compact where the winds were super strong, but in a smaller area, we're likely not going to see that. So the winds might not get quite as strong, but the downside of that is it will be more spread out. So more people will be impacted by those winds. So as this is moving in uh, into the very early morning hours of Wednesday, hurricane winds could spread very well inland into Georgia and potentially even areas a little bit further north of there, depending on how strong it is at landfall. Now, once we get into uh, kind of about the time the sun is coming up here, uh, Hurricane Adalia at this point likely will be well inland, bringing a very heavy rainfall on the northern side of it, as well as uh, some tornado threat here on the eastern side. So anytime you see these kind of like uh, little cells wrapping around on the eastern side of the storm, those will have the potential for tornadoes. So Wednesday afternoon could be a big tornado day in eastern Georgia and eastern South Carolina, as well as Florida. And then again, as this continues to move inland and we have uh, that, you know, combination of that stalled front and just the way that the terrain is built here across the Carolinas, we're going to have a real flooding potential on the northern side of the system. Now that could be for places like Charlotte, Greenville, Spartanburg. That could be a little bit further south for places like Charleston, Columbia. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see exactly where we go. But Wednesday afternoon, you need to be prepared for the potential of some tornadic um, cells here again on the eastern side and some very flooding rains on the northern side, as well as still the potential for tropical storm force winds as well. So again, a lot going on here with the Dahlia uh, try not to overwhelm anybody, but again, just a lot that we need to kind of monitor here. So take a look at our other two models here, our GFS model, very similar story uh, shows. Well, if I back the map up to the right time, uh, shows landfall into the big bend of Florida going into early Wednesday and then brings that heavy shield of rain up into the I-20 corridor of South Carolina and into Eastern North Carolina during the day Wednesday and into overnight Wednesday before clearing out for a nicer um, Thursday for most folks outside of the Eastern North Carolina region. Our European model, again, much of the same, brings us into the big bend of Florida. Uh, but the European model, instead of bringing it inland, kind of just quickly pops it back out over the ocean near Savannah and Charleston and continues to uh, keep a storm that could potentially re-strengthen as it gets back over those open waters. So this is a scenario we will have to watch. Most models still kind of keep this just barely inland, which would allow it to weaken. But if this does manage to get right back over the um, open Atlantic here, especially near this Gulf Stream, those could see increased impacts for places like Charleston, South Carolina, up towards Myrtle Beach, uh, Savannah, Georgia, into Wilmington and Fayetteville as well. So we'll have to watch that scenario as well. Of course, a very possible scenario. Now, one thing I did forget to bring up here that I'm going to uh, quickly grab here if we go to the right page on Adalia here is our latest spaghetti model. So again, a lot of our models here do bring this inland, but if we do get this track just offshore, um, that could bring increased impacts for a place like Charleston, South Carolina. Obviously, we'll monitor that and I'll keep you up to date as we go into tomorrow on the latest model runs. Now, what we do know for sure is uh, it is going to rain a lot for a lot of folks. So obviously where we have landfall and that eye wall comes ashore, we'll see the most rain, but well inland, we're going to have flooding risks into the Columbia, South Carolina area, back towards Florence, potentially up towards Charlotte and Greenville, Spartanburg. Uh, but I think really the greatest chance of that heavy rainfall right now is going to be that I-95 corridor uh, down here into eastern North Carolina and eastern South Carolina. But that rain could spread further inland as well uh, to a very large and extensive um, way. So again, a lot going on tonight. So uh, a lot of, a lot of words coming out, big mouthful uh, going on with Adalia here. And of course, this is really the first big storm we've seen this year. So kind of having to get back into the swing of hurricane season here and it's only August. So don't let your guard down after this one. We'll have plenty more to talk about in the future. Now, with that said, uh, make sure you get a good night's rest because we're going to have a busy week ahead. So uh, don't stay up all night worrying about this thing. We'll definitely keep you up to date, keep you posted. And of course, go to your local officials for the latest information on evacuation orders and any new warnings that are issued. Uh, now, with that said, again, thanks for watching, y'all. I appreciate it, and I will see you all next time.